Hey guys, Dude Legit City here. Today in the game of Oxen Not Included, we're going to be going over a Metal Volcano Tamer design. In our example today, we're going to be taming the Cobalt Volcano. However, this design can be used to tame the Iron Volcano, Gold Volcano, Copper Volcano as well. There is also the Aluminum Volcano that I have not tested this design on. However, I do believe with some minor modifications, we'll be able to handle the Aluminum Volcano as well. Now, the design's going to be like this. We're just going to be utilizing the steam turbine rail room setup with the aqua tuner at the bottom. Once the cobalt volcano erupts, we're going to be running the metal onto the loader, which we actually run on a rail in a steam turbine room in order to cool down the metal into a temperature cool enough for us to cool it. This also acts as a way to heat up the steam so that the steam turbines are going to be actively cooling down the liquids, sucking up the steam, and outputting out the output water. The coolant from this is going to cool the target temperature below 180 degrees, and once it is, it's going to go into our submerged steam turbine setup. The top part of this is a little bit weird. We're actually submerging it in three layers of liquid so that we do not flood the steam turbine and in this case we're using 40 kilograms per tile at the bottom it's a little bit more of course that's going to be uh up to 50 kilograms any more oil may cause the building to run into some flooding issues the second layer is going to be brine or salt water i recommend using either brine or salt water to do this uh polluted water also works and the target volume per tile is going to be 200 kilograms the layer above that's going to be water since water is going to be lighter than all the other liquid elements that we just listed this is going to be a great element to keep up top not only does it have a great specific heat capacity it also is lighter than the other liquids so this allows us to do a three layer stack by doing this and of course the two liquids up here are 200 kilograms per tile with the oil being around 40 to 50 that's going to be the ideal spread if you guys want to add a little bit more water you guys could go up to 250 grams per tile but i do advise just to keep it closer to 200. now with that in mind the rails are going to be like this we're just going to be running the rail setup and once we detect the temperature is going to be cool enough we let the cobalt go into the cooling room of course, that's also going to be where we're cooling down with the aqua tuner. We're running a radiant pipe on top of the rails as well. So not only does the aqua tuner cool down the steam turbine, it's actually keeping the liquid cool enough to act as a cooling room. This means that we could have this design be compact. We don't need any additional space for this. And the output of the cobalt comes out around 30 degrees. You guys won't be able to see that as my environment is actually in the negative temperature. But the cobalt should actually come out closer to 28 to 30 degrees. However, due to the negative temperatures, my cobalt is dropping in temperature relatively quickly. As you can see, as more of the cobalt comes out, you can see that the temperature goes up. The target temperature was, of course, at 30 degrees, so we achieved that. Now, one thing about this design is that this is a very similar design to the Copper Volcano Tamer in that iteration. And the issues with that was that I found that the metals would actually solidify because it touches the steam up upon spawning as it should. However, due to the amount of metals being picked up by the auto sweeper and going out on the loader, sometimes you would get milligrams or micrograms, the MG or MCG rolling on the rail. The problem with that is that the volume or the mass of the metal is so little that the steam and the temp shift plates don't interact with it. This is a problem due to the size of the refined metal running on the rail, and it would never actually go up or down in temperature after that initial solidification. Because of that, it would constantly just roam on the rail and never leave the loop. To solve that, we actually added in some automation. We have a thermal sensor connected to the shutoff, and this is just your normal check. On the other end of that though, we made it so that this sensor, once it detects the refined metal on the specific tile, it kicks on a trigger. This trigger is a buffer into a filter gate. And what I wanted this to do was allow the cobalt to actually loop this three times. And then after the third time, it actually leaves the system. By doing that, this guarantees that all the metals leave the system. And we have a double check setup 
where if the metal does cool down fast enough, it gets to leave early, otherwise it will wait for the timer. The filter gate is set to 100 seconds. The 100 second value actually comes from the size of the room. This room is actually 40 tiles, and I wanted this to go through three loops, and this is going to be the end of the first loop, so to speak. So after that, I made the filter go two and a half times. So 40 times 2.5 is 100 seconds. It takes about a second to travel one unit of rail anyway, so that's going to be where the math comes up with that. Now, of course, before that, we have a buffer gate. This means that the first cobalt is going to trigger the timer to start. If you didn't have the buffer gate, you would actually get staggered red and green signals, causing your filter gate to fail most of the time. And of course, you always want to put your buffer gate one second above your filter gate timer. Of course, that's going to depend on the size of your box below. If you guys have a shorter box, if you guys have a bigger box, you guys may want to account for that. I found that after doing three laps of the conveyor rail in the steam room, my temperature of cobalt goes around 150 to 160 degrees. Uh, we are having the hot cobalt leave though as soon as it's below 180. However, if it's not, it will leave after three loops, making it the bottom room clear whenever possible. Let's go through the setup though for the bottom. The rail looks a little bit confusing. We have the rail basically go from right to left and we start the loader on the second tile. This goes in, loops into the bottom, and then it goes up into the shutoff check. The shutoff check is below 180 degrees, sends a green signal out, allowing it to leave the loop. If it's not below 180, it's going to go through the steam turbine again, and it goes into this input, which is actually a bridge. This bridge allows you to actually go back into the loop without having to load back into the loader, saving up some power and having that run as priority so anything inside the loader would have to yield to whatever's already on the line waiting for an empty spot. Now another thing about this is the automation. You guys might be wondering how does this work? Basically the rule of thumb we're actually utilizing here is that the green signal always overrides the red and that means that if this is true, meaning that the temperature of the cobalt on this specific tile is below 180, it will sh send a green signal. Since green overrides red, this of course becomes a red, uh, green signal. However, the filter is not disturbed as this goes into the output, which means it does not affect the filter gate. That means that once this gets to the bottom of the count and sends a green signal, this is going to override the red signal from the thermal check. This means that everything gets to leave as soon as the timer ends. So this is a great system as it removes the uh, small debris sitting on the rail still. The design with the outputs and the radiant piping is very much just a zigzag. We had the steam turbines come out from the top. Of course, that's going to be easily repositioned and up to you. Another thing about this is temp shift plates. Uh, I would recommend temp shift plates if you guys are worried and lacking of materials though. I will say that you guys don't have to worry. You guys just need to have temp shift plates. And the one thing about this is that my temp shift plates are made out of granite. And they do not have great connectivity. But it's what I had available. And what I'm really trying to say is you just need to have temp shift plates. Ideally, the ones behind the metal volcano, specifically these two. I would recommend having them with a material with a melting point above 1200 as you will easily go around that temperature during the eruption period. So that means you probably want to use something along the lines of igneous rock because this melts around 1400 degrees. So because of that, both this temp shift plate here is made out of igneous and the one behind the volcano on this is also igneous. This one is granite that melts around 6-700, which is fine because it's far enough away and there's enough steam in the area to absorb the excess heat. And of course, we just wanted to have the other temp shift plates to evenly distribute the heat. Of course, you don't need to have something that's high conductivity, but if you do, it would help out. Although if you don't understand that having the temp shift plates all you really need. A couple of cautionary uh, things about this. Oh yeah. the. Uh, Aqua tuner sensor right here is just set to above 24 so that the room stays around 20 degrees. Uh, the cautionary tips. I recommend having you actually fill this up with steam first. 
I have 25 kilograms of steam per tile. That ends up being 100 kilograms per tile of water underground while it's in the vacuum. Typically, that's what you want to do anyways. Have the room be in a vacuum, drip water with a bottle emptier, and then let the cobalt produce steam by using the uh, temperature of the uh, refined cobalt. The problem I would say is if you don't allow the room to fill up with steam before you start turning on your sweeper onto the loader, you have a high chance of breaking a lot of the designs. Because of the vacuum properties, the heat's going to stack up on the individual segments like the rail or the temp shift plate. So what I recommend in the beginning is if you don't use your aqua tuner to heat up the water on the ground to make your initial set of steam, I recommend actually letting the molten cobalt sit on the ground and have that evaporate the water pool that it's sitting in into steam before turning anything on. This is because once it's on the loader and running on the rail, the top part's going to be a vacuum causing some issues with uh, heat distribution. So you don't want to melt things. Another thing is, is that conveyor rails. The top end temperature, like I said before, especially behind these tiles, is going to be around 1200 degrees. Luckily for me, cobalt ore melts at 1500 about. So this is actually safe as long as I have steam present. And that's why you want to make sure that the pool of water becomes steam before it's kicked on. Now, another thing about this design is that this is actually self-powering if it's something you're looking at. The design uses almost no power. The auto sweeper just loads in one time in the very beginning, the loader loads in, and that's about it. Afterwards, you use 10 watts of power for the shutoff check, and then the aqua tuner is the main sucker of power. Now, the thing about the aqua tuner is that it doesn't turn on too often, and this system is actually going to generate power positive amounts of power as long as you actually maintain a jumbo battery for the set. I actually have my battery elsewhere, but you guys could actually use this to generate positive amounts of power. If you guys do want to have this on its own closed loop setup, you guys do have to prime this up. I would recommend having the liquid in your aqua tuner line get to the specific temperature you want to set at or below it so that the top cooling room is at a good temperature. Once that's primed and ready, the next eruption period is going to generate enough power to keep everything else powered. And for the most part, I would recommend a jumbo battery to hold the power so that the aqua tuner has somewhat of a buffer of cooling it down even when the turbines are no longer running. But that being said, guys, this has been the uh, Metal Volcano Tamer. In our example today, we used the cobalt. This design works for iron, copper, cobalt, and of course, gold. I have not tested it on aluminum, but of course I do assume it should work with some minor modifications. And I will get back to you guys on whether or not this design will be good enough as is, or if we need to make some changes. But if you guys have any questions about this, leave a comment down below. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And of course guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you guys.